No, you don't need to invest in lots of fancy galley gear to make delicious meals on board. But a few choice items will make cooking easier on the boat. Hi there, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I share the five galley items I'm happy I have and that I turn to every day. Now first, this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Mantis Marine, marine accessory manufacturer that introduced the famed Mantis Anchor, innovative ground tackle accessories, and a mini scuba line of equipment. They're having a spring sale offering 25% off all merchandise, April 1st through April 9th. Use the code HAPPYEASTER21 on mantismarine.com. Let me start by saying that I think you can make great meals with whatever gear you have. It's possible to make good, tasty, and nutritious meals with nothing more than a dented aluminum pot, a teaspoon, and a pocket knife. I certainly don't think you need a bunch of gadgets to cook well. But a few good pieces of equipment will make things a lot easier and more enjoyable. Now, leaving out the big stuff, like whether or not to have a water maker, and also assuming that you've got things like dishes, glasses, silverware, some pots, pans, basic items like a can opener. What are the little things that I find myself using time after time and happy that I have? Well, that was an emailed question that a reader sent in. She said she'd been reading through many of the outfitting articles that I had and was feeling a little bit overwhelmed. She wanted to know what she might not have really thought about in equipping her galley. Well, I could easily list 50 or more items, but I've narrowed down my list to just five items. Admittedly, some of them have kind of more than one part. These are things that maybe you haven't thought of if you're just moving aboard or if you're starting to plan for moving aboard. The first item on my list is a baking stone. Due to their smaller size, boat ovens tend to have really uneven heat and other problems. A baking stone will do more to help baking in a typical boat oven than almost anything else, helping to retain heat and evening out the hot spots. Just leave it in the oven and use it for everything you bake. Make sure it's at least a half an inch thick so it's not likely to crack or break with the motion of the boat. And I think you'll find here links in the show notes to all of these products where I like them. Now, if you don't have an oven at all, forget about the baking stone. Get yourself an Omnia stovetop oven. I talked about them a couple of weeks ago here on the podcast. They are fantastic and by far the best way to bake on the stovetop. Okay, next item up is a good mixing bowl and a spoon. Now, while you can use almost any container and spoon to mix things up, A mixing bowl and a spoon designed for hand mixing make it so much easier. Now, if you're thinking about making yeast breads, a high-quality plastic bowl makes it easier to tell when you've added just the right amount of flour and makes it easy to knead it right in the bowl without adding too much flour. It can be difficult to find a good hand mixing spoon these days since so few people use them, but a good one makes mixing heavy batters and dough so much easier. Get one that's got a good size and that's comfortable in your own hand. Make sure it's thick enough that it's not going to bend. Okay, knives. Good knives are indispensable, as I find myself cutting and chopping far more foods than when I was living ashore. One good knife will do you more good than a big set of cheap ones. But the reality is, I really only want four knives aboard. A chef's knife, a paring knife, a serrated or bread knife, and a fillet knife, plus a good cutting board and a knife sharpener. You're also going to need a good way to store your knives so that they don't become dangerous missiles in rough seas. We've talked before about a blade safe. That's really good. I actually wrap them in some soft fabric and just put them in a drawer when we're underway. Next item, number four, is a thermos. A really good thermos. Several good thermoses, actually. That's another one of the things that I have highly treasured on both of our boats. I use them for the typical coffee and hot drinks, but they also let me, a small one lets me make my own yogurt 
and I do some thermos cooking like rice and things like that. I have a much larger thermal cooker when I'm cooking big meals, but the smaller size is good for rice, pasta, that sorts of things. There are considerable differences in how well insulated different brands of thermos bottles are. What you really want is a vacuum bottle, not one that just talks about insulation. And then the last one that I had never dreamed of before we moved on the boat was good plastic food storage containers. On a boat, using old butter containers in yogurt tubs just won't cut it. Lids will pop off with the slightest motion of the boat. Buying good containers will save a lot of money and aggravation in the long run. If you buy cheap ones, they'll split. You'll be a lot less than happy when you're cleaning out the refrigerator or locker. And especially, it's going to attract critters if any food spills. There's several good brands of containers, but get the ones with the positive locking lids. Um, lock and Lock, Sterilite, Rubbermaid, all make good ones. The Lock and Locks I like the best because they have the squarest shape and the straightest sides, thus they result in the least wasted space. I was absolutely amazed at how many containers I needed to store all my provisions and how much money I spent on them. It was easily over $100 and more as I later picked up additional containers. You're going to want a bunch. I have to say, it was really tough to narrow this down to just five items, and I'm sure that various people will give you other ideas too. But those are ones that you probably haven't really considered the differences in cooking on a boat versus cooking ashore and that I highly recommend. Thanks for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Help others find us too. Please leave a review on your favorite podcast app.